Oh my goodness, Chase. Look at us. We're little yellow boxes. We we did it. We're uh, we're having we're having a, a play date. Tell me about it. I I, I yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I I I'm also excited. Like we we've talked about this before. We've talked about it a lot, in fact, but we haven't uh, we haven't gotten to show this thing off yet. I don't think the one thing that I'm finding out now is is that I don't believe I can turn off the audio from the physical play date and keep it on stream here as well. Uh, if if it's if you're getting the audio from the mirror app, you should be able to turn your audio from the from the device all the way down. Let's find out. Oh, okay. okay. Also, while you're doing that, I'm going to mute yeah. myself and listen to the show audio. Yeah, that, that seems to be working. I think there's some clicking there. That seems to be coming through. The one thing I need to make sure really quick is let me adjust just okay. one output. How about me? I'm just testing me. Yeah, I think you sound good. You're coming yep. through, baby. Let me Everything's put this good. onto that. That should help out. Okay. So, cool. and we're on your play date. Let's uh, let's be sure of that. Um, but I I also have one of these things. It's pretty cool. It says yes. I have new games available that I have not played yet. Yeah, I might have you. Um, so we're I've got this plugged in, and uh, we're using the free Mirror app that you can get from Panic on their website. So I've got this hooked up. Actually, I'm gonna take this case off tonight. Um, That's smart. I've got this cable that goes into a, a USB hub beneath my desk that plugs into my computer. So I keep this, and this is where I charge my play date, but then if I plug it in, I get this really awesome interface that you all uh, will see a little bit more of here in a second. But mm -hmm. this is real time. Uh, you're gonna see, actually, I'll just go ahead and click over to it. Um, so you can see me cranking this down there. Uh, if I'm- Well, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, buddy. This is a family show. Yeah. Uh, so I've got this all set up here for us. Um, and we're going to show off some games. We're in season one. So Chase, we've had our play dates now for what? Four, I weeks? think this is our fourth week. Fourth, four weeks now. Yeah. And uh, if you happen to be getting your play date anytime soon, you're going to start season one. And they do two games a week and kind of ease you into it that way. So today, new games every Monday morning. Uh, we'll go over some of those tonight, but I've got some side-loaded games. Chase and I have been uh, doing some stuff there. There's a really cool podcast that you might have heard of if you hang out with us enough called Gamers on the Go, which one of us hosts and sometimes co-hosts on. Uh, but a friend of the show, Matt Jaguar, joined Chase for his podcast, and we talked about this thing at length. We'll link to that here in a little bit. We love this little thing, Chase. We're big fans. It's it's a it's a neat little thing. Like I I haven't found I haven't found anything to really sink my teeth into. But at the same time, that's just not what this device is. This this is really built for those short spurts of play that are that are perfect for hey I've got five minutes. Yeah. And and in that in that regard, it's really great. And just the I think it's got enough whimsy to it for for everything else that I've. I'm very happy with my purchase. I'm, I'm really happy that we have it. So I think the best way to kick this off is to play the intro that you first see when you power this thing up. And you can replay this through the settings anytime you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and do that uh, as a, hey, welcome to the play date. And then we'll go into some of our games from there. Hmm. So uh, you're greeted with this awesome screen. It's teaching you how to interact and navigate with this. I think it's just so well done. It's just it's just clever and fun and playful. It's it's so good. It also does a good job of showing off how sharp 
this this little display is. Totally. I mean, and... Obviously, we're showing it through the mirror app, so it's on a computer here. But the if you are looking at the physical device itself, this the the screen on this thing is is sharp. It yeah, is it is it's... nice. Not backlit, which I know is what people complain about, and and I understand. But uh, it's a it's a nice little screen. Chase, I'm gonna let you pick where we start first tonight. Uh, let's. Why don't we? Hmm. You know. Why don't we start with um with what the the, the very first game. Why don't we start with uh, Whitewater? Yep. Now that I think about it. Wow, you really just want a... to look like an asshole tonight, huh? Well, I I think it's a it is just a good explanation of what this thing does and sure. and and the the main gimmick, which is the crank. Um, and what I really like that you see on the screen is that you you have uh, in this interface of, of the mirror app, you actually can see the position of the crank and see when the buttons get hit. So people people can see exactly what you're doing wrong or right to make this game. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh... let's jump right into it. This is this is basically if you've played the California games surfing, it's very much just that. Except you got a crank, and the crank determines where your board is. So when when Bobby has the crank in kind of the down or slightly down left position, that allows his board to the tip of the nose of his board to come down, and and he uh, stays on the board that way. Ooh. But if he does that and uh, lands a little bit awkwardly, then he falls. Yes. And also, if he goes all the way down to the uh, to the bottom of the screen there. And he'll just crash into those waves and and fall. And if he goes too slowly, you have to go to the you have to go to the left on this. Um, but if you go too slowly to the left, there's a big wave that's coming uh, from the right side of the screen, and it will take you out too. Yeah, it's it's a great pick up and play game. Um, I think it's a really good first like impression of like oh this is this hardware does like. It shows off the crank in a really satisfying way. Yep. Oh, good for you. There's that wave. Um, there's also, uh, I think we saw the fin once, but there is also a shark that is near, near the bottom of the screen that I think can, uh, can kind of grab you in a balloon fight style. Yes. Hey, Jiggy. Thanks for hanging out with Jiggy. us. Jiggy! What's up, my friend? Uh, Bobby, you you th thought I was going to make you look like an asshole by picking this game. Oh, I wonder if you catch the bird, if that also makes you lose. Maybe. You, like, hit the bird that's up in the air. Um, this is way better than any score I've gotten in this game. Oh, really? Uh-oh. I'm uh, yeah, yeah, starting yeah, yeah, yeah. at pop hot. Here we go. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Bobby's, uh, Bobby's too busy hanging 10. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, pretty sucky. Pretty sucky, sis. Uh, all right. Down. Well done. Uh, let's, uh, let's see how you score. Can you, can you, there you go. Look, you did your best score ever. You all saw it here. Look at you. My That's high great. score. Why don't you, why don't you press me for the global ranking and then see how, uh, how sure. ridiculous people are. Look at those scores. Look at those fucking scores. Who's Those cranking people it? don't have lives. Hey, who's cranking it they're, that hard? They're, yeah, they're just cranking it all day, every day to get scores like that. Cra hey, Chase. Uh, <laughs> Chase. Yeah. Cr cranking ain't easy. That's that's what I hear. That is what I hear. Keep the crank hand strong. I don't know. Jiggy, so, give me a number between 1 and 49 before we move on to the next game here. So one thing to note while he's doing that, um, I do want to talk a little bit about the hardware for a second. So... It's pretty simple, as we've talked about. You got a sleep wake button on the top of this. Uh, this is a USB C port on the bottom. You do have a, a headphone jack here. It does have Bluetooth capabilities. I don't think that that's fully unlocked yet. Uh, your crank can tuck into the side of the play date itself. You've got your B and your A buttons and your D pad. Um, if you press this button up here, this is your start button or your home button, it'll bring up this overlay. Uh, if you're in the middle of a game, you can just hold that button down and press up and down on your D-pad to adjust your volume while you're playing without pulling this up, which is a nice little side side shortcut there. But at any time, you can go right into your home screen. That'll take you back out here to your app picker, and we're back to picking games. You can use the D-pad or the crank to get through here. And 
that's some overall navigation of of the play date yeah all right you ready to talk about a little anime before we get into the next game oh we can do a little bit of both go for it all right bobby i've got uh got a fun one here for you um let me give you the genres first the genres are action adventure comedy and fantasy and the anime is oh this is an anime from uh relatively recent uh october 2nd 2018 to march 19th 2019 it's been going on for a bit i think it's i think it's got three seasons okay so. um Anyway, this is that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Yep. What? Yeah. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. That's right. Tenchi Shatara Slime Dota Ken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let, actually, let me make sure. Is this... Uh... Is this... I mean, with a, with a title like that, it's got to be adapted from a light... Bobby, you know what a light novel is? Is it like a graphic novel? No, that's a manga. Come on. Oh, Come on, what sorry. are you doing? Get out of here. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. It's absolutely a light novel. Uh, a light novel, Bobby, is, uh, is a style of Japanese young adult novel primarily targeting high school and middle school students. Uh, it's it's kind of just like, here's a here's a short novel, maybe 50,000 words. Uh, they're just, they're kind of easy and breezy. But they're, they're fun. Uh, there was a group of kids hanging out at school. They become best friends. They were looking for their second term classes to be taking. And one of them that looked like an easy A was going to be this science lab. And mm -hmm. uh, they figured this would be a place for them to hang out, goof off, share work, not have a whole lot to deal with. And uh, in doing so, they had found that one of their professors was a little off the rocker and maybe was having them do some type of work that had questionable origin in nature. Some people thought a little, a little slimy, you think a little slimy, maybe like a little, this, a this, little demonic this professor. This teacher is a little bit of a slime ball. You might say, yes, a little bit of a slime ball teacher. Uh, in doing so, the kids were just like, hey, this is an easy A. We get to use some of the stuff that maybe be a bit more advanced for us being early beginners. Uh, they also had carte blanche kind of with this this lab. Like they could come and go as they needed to to work on projects. If it was after hours, you know where this is going. One night, they all end up in this lab working on one of these advanced assignments. And as they concocted this brew, a big puff of smoke happened and all of a sudden the kids were transported into a weird dimension where they were all made of slime, like a bunch of Gooigi's. And uh, that ended up being a problem and it was part of the teacher's trap. He wanted their souls. And so he had duped them all into an easy A, took their souls from them, but they ran into a bunch of other students there that had been trapped in this dimension for a while. And they had been teaching them what they had learned while being there. And they'd found that there was a celestial being that was part of this, that was trying to get out. It had been trapped as well. They all powers combined. They get out. Teacher gets in trouble. He gets banished to the dimension rather than being turned in. That's the anime. Well, oh, Bobby, I gotta say, I'm a little proud of you because I think you, uh, I think you got some things very right. Oh. But I also want to say I'm extremely disappointed in you because I think this was a softball that I think you should have been able to nail, and you, uh, and I'd say you might have gotten like a. You're supposed to get a home run. But hey, I, you you've already got you one grand slam tonight. What do you need from me? <laughs> That's fair. Fair point. Uh, go Cardinal. Um. So Bobby, you yes. you played you've played Dragon Quest Eleven, right? You played mm -hmm. a little bit of that game. You didn't yeah. finish it, obviously. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know the you know those creatures in there, little blue slimes. Yeah. That's that's the kind of slime we're we're talking about. I mean, it's not a Dragon Quest slime. It's not this. The show is not Dragon Quest branded. But like that's that's kind of what we're talking. About. 
So, what if I told you, Bobby, that this is an isekai? Do I would you, believe we, it. Well, let's give you a little pop quiz. Bobby, do you remember what an isekai is? Yeah, it's like a, a, a another, like, dimension traveling like yeah. time traveling type deal yep another world and that's the and that's the thing you nailed there you did you did have another dimension in your in your description so good on you for that uh but i think you kind of missed the genre of fantasy in there oh. a little bit uh you you kept going on the science fiction which is fine uh, that's my wheelhouse so let me uh let me run through this real quick here 37 year old sataru mikami is a typical corporate worker who is perfectly content with his monotonous lifestyle in Tokyo. Other than falling, uh, other than failing to nail down a girlfriend even once throughout his, throughout his entire life. Uh, in Whoa. the midst of a casual encounter with his colleague, he falls victim to a random assailant on the streets and is stabbed. Uh, however, while succumbing to his, well, it's called reincarnated crime. He has to die first. You know, that's the whole that's point, true. right? That's true. Yeah. Um, however, while succumbing to his injuries, a, pe a peculiar voice echoes in his mind and recites a bunch of commands which the dying man cannot make sense of. When Satoru regains consciousness, he discovers that he is reincarnated as a goop of slime in an unfamiliar realm. In doing so, he acquires newfound skills, notably the power to devour anything and mimic its appearance and abilities. He then stumbles upon the sealed catastrophe level monster Storm Dragon Veldora, who has been sealed away for the past 300 years for devastating the town to ashes. Sympathetic to his predicament, Satoru befriends him, promising to assist in destroying the seal. In return, Veldora bestows upon him the name Rimuru Tempest and to, to grant him divine protection. Now the liberated are now liberated from the mundanities of his past life, Rimuru embarks on a fresh journey with a distinct goal in mind as he grows accustomed to his new physique, his gooey antics ripple throughout the world, gradually altering his fate. Hmm. I, uh, I'll tell you what people, I'm... I know, pe I know people like this this show. I have not watched it, and I have a I have a pretty, uh, pretty firm hand when I say, get that isekai shit out of here! Damn. Um, unless, unless it's Digimon, and then that's that's a whole different thing. Uh, well, you're right, Chase. We've got bigger yeah. fish to fry, and we've got bigger birds to see. We're playing hey, casual man. birder now at this point Perfect. in time. Um, so, so this was the second game that came out. Uh, yeah. So the, the first week of content, uh, you you kind of mentioned it there, but when you when you get a fresh play date, you don't just get all the games that are out for it now. You get these games piecemeal, and you get them. You start getting them whenever you connect first connect your your uh, playdate to the internet. So these will be the first two games you get, no matter when you connect this thing. And and I think they're two solid games. You get you get the the Whitewater Wipeout, which is a, a really quick and easy game, and well not easy but easy to understand, easy to pick up. And then you get this, which is a little bit of a deeper. Not quite an RPG exactly, but it's got it's got some role playing elements to it. I think to it's it, got some, some role playing, elements. some point and click kind of mm -hmm. like you're not really point and clicking, but it's you can see in the upper left hand corner. Um, I'm gonna cycle through them. Gonna, yeah, like mm -hmm. you get these things. It's, it's very much like use this item to get this item, and trying to figure out how to get into this birding competition. Uh, you have a very awesome mechanic. Uh, when you are on the camera, so let me slide back over to that one. Uh, so when I pull that up, you see me do this a few times, but you can actually focus this with the crank, like depth the field focusing, and mm -hmm. you are taking pictures of some birds, which is cool. Let me see if I can get my album pulled up here. You get a bird diary, which is a lot of fun. That's meatball. Um, if you've heard us talk about, or if you've played Toem, uh, I think that you will find a lot to like in Casual Birder. And yep. if you've liked Casual Birder and you've not played Toem, I think you should absolutely go and play that because that's a really cool game too. True. But this is, this is uh, a fun, Bobby, a fun go, one. Go back to screen, please. Mm -hmm. this, this is just, this is my favorite thing. I just, dogs only and other pets. Dogs what only great, and other pets. What a great sign. Just a perfect sign, especially when there's a bird right in the window. 
I think the artwork in this game is fan fucking tastic. By the way, the whole packet, the whole package of this, the sound, the art, it's just very well done. And other pets. Dogs are the smartest animals alive. So, I'm, I'm not gonna play through this. It's a, it's, I think a game best left for you to explore and check it out. But it's a neat one. It's one of my favorite games that has come out to date on this. Um, the uh, the developer has a walkthrough that he made himself. Oh really? You can go and because mm -hmm. there's there's a part that I got stuck on relatively early in the game, and so I've got that pulled up just so I can get through it because it's just kind of fun to to go through and, and see some stuff and see some birds. One of the other really cool things about this hardware and software is it. So you can see up here at the top, it's going to say season one, but as I keep going, it now says my games, and this these are games that I've picked up off itch. And there's a really easy way to sideload games on here. And you just log into your account on the Playdate website and you drag the zip folder over to it and it's there wirelessly for you to just install onto it. I'm yeah, sure. these are all these are all unofficial games. Um, so the things that are things that are side things that are in season one, those are things that I believe Panic has gone out and paid for, or made partnerships with developers yeah. to to make. This is just people because they also released a, a, a development kit out there for people to use for free, and uh, people are are building our. I, I, I guess two of them, right? There's a there's like an easy visual language yeah. that people can use, and there's one that's more that one's super called coding Pulp, based, and that's all right? uh, web browser based. So you can check that out there. Um, so this this game is ten bucks. It's the most expensive game I've gotten on here so far. Mm -hmm. Um, it's incredibly detailed. It's a real time game. Um, so as you can see here, it's 11 PM. I think it's a little ahead of schedule. Um, Touch. <laughs> but this is a game that is meant to just kind of be played throughout the day in small doses. Um, pick it up, go for it. It's kind of like a, uh, I get the same lo-fi beats the study and chill too or whatever that is like on youtube mm -hmm. like it's it's a similar uh vibe to that um here you've got a very simple action there's there's really two areas of the game you've got your your actual store and then you crank up to the rooftop and uh as you're in this view you are interacting with your cell phone and the game is really being told through all these conversations that you'll be having throughout the day and there are some choices that you can choose to uh play through so it unlocks more things on it you can just come come to these as you want to i think the language and uh how they've tuned that is really well done but the big thing here is is that you are running this shop and you're you're skipping out of school and you're starting up a new life and you and you're following your dreams so i don't have a ton of money right now but because i had just bought a bunch of plants and i've been able to unlock two more spaces on the rooftop and as i pay more rent money i'll soon have this entire roof where i can put shit on there uh, but as you hold down b you are just going to be cycling through some tools that you have so if i have the shovel i can start to grab what's planted oh now you're now you're flush with cash look at that so then I can come back down and go in here and I can shop and start to buy more flowers if I want to. So this Bobby, really you want to take a you want to take a guess at what 5,376 yen equates to in US dollars? A couple hundred bucks, I think. $42 and 7 cents. It's a lot of money. Um <laughs> Jiggy, you're absolutely right. The screen does look really good and I I think that there's just a lot that's gone into this again there's games within games here there's a whole currency paying off your your debt to get more of those it's it's just really well done um but citizen sleeper is what you're saying you no know, in a way <laughs> in a way <laughs> yeah uh but this is bloom and you can follow more about this on uh itch if you want to follow along with that and just download that from them but it's a very very cool game yeah, I mean, 10, 10 bucks seems pretty expensive compared to everything else that we see. And also knowing that you're going to end up getting 24 games 
for free. I mean, they come with the play date uh, in season one. So the the idea of dropping another ten bucks on another game seems a little steep, but it it really is very impressive, and and I think it I think it does a lot to earn that uh that cost. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna show off this new game here. I don't even know what it's called. Yeah. There's just no title here. It's just this eyeball. Um, sure. So, I I rather like what they're doing with this. I um, remember seeing this one in in trailers. Oh, maze. There you go. Let's, yeah. Oh, maze. Let's just call it that. <laughs> so, uh, this is a crank input, and then the mm -hmm. B button. So as you can see, I can move this ball all around no issues when i get to this mm -hmm. opening i can so oh i can uh with a change the the path that those are going through so you uh, see rotation? how those, the rotation so i'm changing okay. clockwise and this is a, a new mechanic so bear with me as i'm learning it uh you okay. press b to go to the next one and so now i can change the rotation okay and so you have to hit you have to be when you're right next to the the next circle yep so okay i'm gonna push this through here mm -hmm. like so and that object that was on the side was going to keep me from being able to get so if you hit that you start over essentially so we'll go through here and that's the timing aspect now uh, so you can't you can't crash into that into that object there, right? Right. That's what you're saying? So, uh, okay. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, rotation to help with this. Perfect. And this looks like I have to change that a few times. So let's crank this over, change rotation. Oop. I want it to go that way. There we go. Now we're cooking. Can you? Can you change rotation while your ball there, is on? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. You have. So that's going through there. Changed it that way. There we go. Very nice. Uh, that's a new mechanic. Oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what this does. Ah, okay. So that's certain openings for that. Yeah. I wonder why that would go over there. Well, it would go over there, so you can now freely crank and get your because uh, yeah. you want to you want to crank you you want to crank a full rotation. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Now you got it. That's a neat idea. I like this. Yeah, this is a cool game. Like this is one that like I've been pretty captivated by. Uh, this came out for us, so four weeks, and this is part of season four. But this is like the type of shit that I would want from like a pickup, grab and go. Like this is just a, a great little mind teaser. If I'm in between calls at work, because like I keep this on my desk now. Like this is always mm -hmm. on my desk here at work. And if I get off a call and I got like five minutes, I just want to like think differently. I'll grab this thing and do something like this. So think differently. I, that was your old job, Bobby. You don't do that. Anymore. Hey, uh, I do like this quite a bit. Yeah, that that seems that seems like a great little. I've got two minutes. Let's uh let's solve a puzzle or two. Nice. Uh, what should we go to next? Um, hmm. I do like cranking. Maybe we save cranking for a little bit. Uh, why don't we? You know, it'll be quick. Why don't you go all the way down? Let's show a side another side little game. Let's do uh, let's do a joke. That's oh right. god damn it. This is this is my favorite game on this thing, and it's it's nothing, but it's also the most. I'm so bad at this. It's so beautiful. Don't don't start bouncing yourself yet. Let's just uh, let's just speak through this one. So first of all, it's a visual representation of the actual play date. I love it. Um, and as you rotate the crank, your the the visual representation is also one to one moving the crank. Um, and you see those star that that star there. What you need to do is bounce that little guy using the crank as like a as like a bumper or like a seesaw to to hit those to hit those stars. But you got to keep them bouncing up in the air. It's awful. And as it's you're awful. doing this, every star that you collect, you are you're getting another uh, line of this very long joke. 
that is going on. It's very good. Also, this song is incredible that it's just talking about the game. Three guys are sitting three three guys. I'm so bad at this. All right. Well, for, first, just stop. keep keep your keep your uh, keep the crank flat. Like you've got it vertically. You wanna you wanna keep it. Bring it down. There you go. So use that, and I wouldn't don't go up. Go down. Like bounce it this way. Bounce like, it, bounce down it a little. Three guys. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> there you go. Now you got it. That's what you need to do. There you go. I grant you three wishes. Perfect. The first guy. So the only thing that kind of bumps me out about this game. Uh, other other than the extreme frustration of feeling feeling like, like you're, it's like you're been getting screwed. Five made this. Um, <laughs> the only thing I don't love is that it's I don't think it's a bug. That's that's a bug where sometimes it has the joke go over the over the screen. But um, it's not a bug exactly. But if you collect too many stars too quickly, it'll skip over some of the lines. <laughs> Yeah, this is probably terrible for people listening on a stream, but this is I, terrible for me. <laughs> I wish I wish I could take over for you, Bobby. I wish there was some way for me to uh, parsec. There's not a way for me to do that, right? No. Like, like I couldn't. No, I. There's no way for me to connect my playdate to my no. computer and no, then use the silly, controller silly for you. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you, I've gotten very good at this. Well, I wouldn't say very good. I haven't seen the end of it. Uh, I've, I've gotten quite far in the joke. Uh, basically, the point is, I, I talk a little bit more about the joke on, on that episode of Gamers on the Go. But I will say that um, you have this fairy that appears. There's three guys sitting at a bar. She gives them each three wishes. And so they each make a wish she grants it the next guy makes another wish she grants it the next guy makes another more absurd wish and she grants it and then they do that over and over again and uh and it, it, there's just so many lines to this joke that it, it goes on for a, a long time but basically the the thing is that the the first guy wishes for a million bucks the second guy wishes for 10 million dollars and the third guy says he wants uh, he wants a bouncy butt and and I imagine that this guy who you're bouncing in this game is the guy uh, from the joke because his second wish is that he wants to he wants to only be an inch tall, inch high. Which this guy is this guy has to be smaller than an inch. There you go. Look at you. Just you may, maybe go a little bit hard, but you know you're 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 fine. The great fairy says. I don't know. I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm I'm not gonna stream this. And in fact, I haven't seen anybody really stream this. I've seen people play this. I haven't seen anybody play this well to the point where I hear more of the joke than I've heard by myself. So maybe maybe that means I need to be the one to record myself playing this game and see how far I can get. You're a special kind of mean person i love it i love the song I, I think the song is maybe the best part of it it's the song is just so well done and and like the game name says it's it's worth 99 cents it's 99 cents on itch Act, technically it's a dollar on on itch but it's got a one percent sale that goes on for like the next eight years so it's gonna be 99 cents it's a it's a beautiful dumb little thing and I absolutely love it. You can also turn off the narration. You can also turn off the music entirely if you just want a little guy and not have to worry about anything. Watch us get like a DMCA takedown for using that thing or DCMA, whatever it fucking is. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll um, be fine. All right. So this is a new game, Demon Quest mm -hmm. 85. I have no idea what it is. It just came out today. But this is the first game with a content warning. Uh-oh. Okay. So, so why don't we have a... A very quick look at what this is. Naked vomit everywhere. Okay. Is this is a text-based text-based adventure. Hmm. It's fair. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel like 
Somebody somebody put Doom on this thing, right? Yep. Because uh, was it the chainsaw or there's some maybe the, the chain the gun? Chain, the chain gun. The chain gun you use the crank to uh, to just the uh, make it go. It's a very good idea. Um, is that? I I want to pay more attention to this, and I can't do that on a stream. Okay, I guess I guess that's just a demo for now. For demo or for uh, Doom? Yeah, I I think somebody was just kind of doing it as a proof of concept. I want to see, I want to see that actually happen. Oh, it's yeah. elevator action. Yeah. Oh, it's like, hang on, it's like elevator action, but like a game and watch game seems to be all right we're gonna get these guys up here okay we're going down how do you know which which way you want to take them i'm just I know going it's got those exclamation points, yeah but... that's just where i'm going okay so those exclamation points are where they want to go not that it's being stacked up yeah, that's what it seems to be. Huh, that's interesting. Oh, another four. Oh, no. Okay. There you go. I like this. Okay, we're going to get you in there. We're going to go up to the third floor. And that's the crank, by the way, if you didn't notice on the screen there. We'll go down here to you. Yeah, this seems to be a fully crank game. Yep. So you're, you seem to be getting time back every time you make a, make a trip. Yes. It's like about three seconds. And the stars are how many you can keep going up. Okay, we're going to go down here. Uh-oh, I think I just another floor. I think you did. Let's go here really quick. Okay, guess you're not getting on. <laughs> I mean, this is. I could see that this might get pretty chaotic at some point. Well, yeah, I, I guess, because I'm seeing, I'm thinking this game is similar to like a, like a mini motorways. But yes. I'm not. I wonder if too many penguins get stacked up on one floor that you also lose. Probably. Or is it? Is it just? Whether you can keep up with the exclamation points. I think it's like keeping up with all those there. I'm going to miss that one up there. Okay, we oh, got there. Gives you a little grace period. This seems all right. This seems cool. Th this uh, came out yeah, last I week, I think. Okay. Yeah, you got another floor, too. Um, yeah, I want to see... I want to see, like, a really chaotic... This... Okay, we're gonna go to this floor. So are they only getting off where they want to get off? Well, so, I think it's I, I think it's the number of exclamation points. Yeah, you only had one you only had one get off there. So now go to go to that next floor where there's two. Yeah, you had two get off there and one stayed on. Okay. Okay. So we'll pick okay. up. Okay, that makes some sense. Yeah, this is this seems alright. Yeah, I like that. What's that called? Flipper Lifter. Sure. This is week three. Uh, and then I think lost your marble and pack or pick pack. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I Let's take to... a little break and do a little trivia over here. Yeah. Bobby was very excited to do this trivia. Uh, he mentioned it pre-show. He thought this would be a good question. So looking forward to I think it's a good this. one. Um, All right. It's one that Let's I think Jiggy you'll appreciate. It. So, first question. How many colossi is Wander tasked with well, defeating this, this is too easy. Shadow Jiggy, of the Colossus? Jiggy just streamed this game. <laughs> Let's see what he says. If he doesn't know, something's really... 16 it that, is. That boy. That boy. Developed by Rare. A, a Baker's which, Dozen, I believe is what they call it. The back, the back side of this here. 
Yeah. Developed by Rare, which side-scrolling beat-em-up game was released in 1991 in a response to the popularity of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In response? Yep. You mean in response to just the popularity of it? Of, of yep. the franchise? Okay. Yep. Released yeah, by yes, Rare. I, I know that a Jiggy, I know that a Baker's Dozen is 13. I'm being I was being a being a little shit. Double Dragon is incorrect, but there you are, because they had a team there up. It is. There it, is. it is Battle Toads. And because I am feeling generous, we'll do another one of those, right? Like why why shouldn't we do another Sounds good to me. trivia? <laughs> Like that you had to pay for it yourself. You couldn't just do it. You needed to make it official. Honest. Keeping it honest here. Honest, Bob. Which five colors are used hey, on the fret? Hey, what's going on here? Hey, used on the fret buttons of Guitar Hero controllers. Which five colors? Guitar Hero. Do you want them in order? Uh, Sure. For bonus, yeah. Yeah. Was the Jiggy Shred on the Guitar Hero? Was he a shredder? Or did uh, he own this? That sounds like a game that Jiggy would have played. Red, I... yellow, green, blue, orange. Is that the order? I think that I think that's right. I know red and orange are right. And I think I... blue is right. I don't. I, I can't remember the order. I'm going off what it has here, and it says. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look up uh, the Explorer guitar from Guitar Hero. Let's 2. see here. We're gonna keep everybody honest tonight. But I think I think you're right. I just don't know if green and green and yellow. Are... Red, yellow, green, blue, orange from Jiggy. Because this. Oh no! It's it's the green, Explorer red. guitar has green, red, yellow, yeah, blue. That's what it has okay. on here. I thought I thought red was first, but no, red is second. Okay. This is a really so, tough half, one. Half credit, half credit there, Jiggy. This is the toughest one night. In which right. Nintendo 64 game does the player take on the role of Joanna Dark? Oh, man, that's a tough one. That's, that's tough one. not even fair. Tough one. Who, who could even guess? Who would guess? Who, who, who could possibly guess? Yeah, I mean, you have to make a perfect guess to be able to guess. There you, there you go. He got Perfect. it. There it is. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Jiggy had said, what do you say on here? Pick Pack Pup is pretty good. Let's check that one out. Okay. Okay. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, Jiggy, I purchased a, a book today, or I purchased it recently. Uh, it's by it's by your, your favorite Boston sports journalist, Bob Ryan. Your favorite in mine. Seems like it'll be good. Wanna check that out? Ooh, they make you dock the crank to continue. Interesting. Whoa. Okay. Move your hand with the direction buttons. Grab the item by holding A. Bring him the ball. The dog is asking you to fetch. That seems wow. that seems very wrong. We're gonna shoot yeah, that I, out. Yeah, I like I like Bob Ryan a lot. Um, I watch Around the Horn every day, so I like him and I. She's not on the show anymore, but I like Jackie McMullen as well. Another good Boston writer. Good stuff. Look forward to reading that. So you're, uh, this is like a, this is like one of them puzzle games. So combining shapes. This is cool. I can already tell you I'm going to like this. Mm -hmm. And then we can ship that out. The music's so good. Holy shit. Is this a, is this just a match three game? Yes. Okay. But it looks like you can match more than three. I wanted to. Ooh, Let's go. nice combo. C -c -c combo breaker. Press the B button when you want to quit the tour. Okay. I'll do a few more here to get my footing. God, I like this music. Very good. Oh, I'm digging this a lot. Baseball. baseball? Shit, sorry. Uh, no, no. It's fine. All right. All packaged pups need to start somewhere, and you are in the right game mode for that. There you go. Uh, settings would just be music, sound effects. Okay, pretty simple. Resume game. 
quit the tutorial. Back to the crank. So this is neat. Now you need the crank. Okay. Uh, kind of like citing the comic strip there. I like this a lot. That is nice. I like this art. Yeah, this is really cool. Back to docking the crank. Interesting. Okay. I, there was a there was an, a uh, an interview that Patrick Klepek did with a couple of the people from Panic, and they were talking about that uh, all the crazy ideas that they were coming up with this coming up with for the. Th for the the mechanics of the the system itself and what uh what's the what's the um other company that was working in teenage engineering yeah okay uh, they had a bunch of little gimmicks and gizmos that they wanted to add to this thing but the crank was kind of the one that stuck throughout the whole process and i can't remember how it came about but somebody somebody mentioned like hey is there a way to should should we have some indicator that you can dock the crank, and huh. and they're like, yeah, that's probably good from like a from like a um, oh, what am I trying to think of the uh, like the the quality control that you'll get when you're putting a game on Xbox. What what is it called? Like uh, there's like certain things that you need to do to have your game pass. certification. That's what it is. Uh, like that's probably like a good certification thing to to know that games can can have that ability to just it, it would be useful for a system level thing to know whether the crank is in there or not i think it's just there's a magnet in yes. inside the inside that little this little thing where you put, put the crank in just to be able to know whether it's in or not but then you have developers out here who are seeing another input of the device of whether the crank is in or not that binary binary choice and uh and people are implementing it into their games and i think that's really cool man i but also really like when you this. have the when you have the system on uh when you take it out and you you when you undock and dock the crank it makes a, a nice little nintendo switch style sound it's very satisfying for sure it's quite good it's quite good all around yeah i'm i'm liking this quite a bit so what's the uh What's like the lose? Is there a lose condition here? Uh, I don't think there's a lose condition, but there's a bonus condition that I'm trying to meet currently. Okay, because I'm not seeing a time limit on this. What a chill match three game. I sure do love my game with zero politics. Yeah. No problem at all. Do you think it's nice to have cats and maybe a pet? You know, if like. You if you um <laughs> that's good i like this um if you put because you had you had tvs in there you had like a stack of tvs that got packaged if you put another tv next to a package of tvs with that. does it stay does it add to that package like do that top tv switch it with that bottle nope okay no so once once it's in a package it's done Correct. I don't think there's any other combos here, so we'll clear all that out. Um, that can be a combo. That can be that. You can TV go there. The top. What's that? TV at the top. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one. I think that's it. Yep. Okay, so you get you get more money for the bonuses doing more in one. Yeah. In one session. I'm digging it. I think this is this is really neat. Um, yeah. I, I like this quite a bit. And this is uh, let's see here. What's this one called again? Pick pack pup. Pick pup? pack pup. Pick pack pup. Okay. Yeah. Forward to play more of that one. Bobby, what's the game underneath that? Lost your marbles. Bobby, do you uh, you know where you could find your marbles? Never Neverland. He lost them good. Well, not not quite. It's not quite what I was going for. Oh, what were you going for? Have you checked your butthole? How long have you been sitting on that one? 
I've been sitting on it as soon as I remembered that Lost Your Marvels is on this. <laughs> I can't get that song out of my head. It's so good. God. Uh, this is the one that they partnered with Sweet Baby, that development studio, on. Mm -hmm. and they, um, they had announced that there was a partnership or at least like an internship, I think, that they were doing that was going to be um, supporting like minority and female-led game development and that they were going to be trying to do further future partnerships to get some games from that studio and partners on here, which I think is really rad. They, they talked a lot about that on their first big unveiling of the device when they finally showed off all that there was about it. So, yeah. I, I think this game's like 80% of the way there. And okay. I, I really wish it was 100%. Because I think it's got something... I, I think it's got some cool ideas. So I'm just trying to bust that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta use the ball to uh, you gotta use the the crank to shift monkey ball style the the world so the ball will crash into different things. The idea here is that she's about to like a, a science experiment's about to go wrong and she loses her marbles in that she kind of her mind gets a little screwed up. And you have to basically when whenever you're in that screen where you're doing the monkey ball thing, yeah. that is her mind, Proto's mind. Oh, okay. And you're trying to get her to the right answer, but you can also steer her into wrong answers that will also continue the story. And all that stuff is great. I love I love all that. the The problem for me is that this game only uses the bottom hemisphere of the crank. You can only when I, mean, I know you Got can't it. see me all that well, but you can only use the crank in in this position. If you go up here, it doesn't register anything anymore. So it's I understand why. I, I think the game would lose a lot of its challenge if you allowed full control, but I just don't think it I just don't think it feels very good when you when you try to move the crank higher than its threshold and it just stops it just completely stops uh, registering, and that's that's yeah. kind of a bummer. I'm, I'm feeling that now here. So I think I think you've seen. All right, she's she's lost her marbles at this point, so you're unable to get to the right answer of orange. Yeah, it's because like... there's that crack. So now you can only do the. But you're going to get to a point where you get into these puzzles where you can have multiple choices, and oh, and some of it. some of them are completely wrong or bad. And some of them are spot on, and then there's some that are kind of in the middle. Like there's a time where you're you're trying to make a sandwich for a dog. This game goes places. Um, there's a time where you're making a sandwich for a dog, and the sandwich guy's like, "Well, what what's your dog like on his sandwich?" And you're trying to think of what he likes in the sandwich, and the first thing you think of is what meat or what protein goes on there, and and you can pick lots of different options. There's there's a ham or there's a turkey, uh, but there's also just protein powder, and that's it's you know good. not the not the best answer for this, uh, but it is the easiest one to hit. Uh, so the the challenge is trying to navigate in a way that allows you to get the better answers instead wow. of the instead of the bad ones. Uh... Yeah. Okay. It's it's kind of a long story one. There's probably not a lot we need to need to show here. But yeah, we can we can do this. So so on this one, uh your so your dog's been lost and you were trying to get it back. Uh and the first and so what you're doing here is trying to make flyers to uh to say that you have a, a lost dog. And at this point you're trying to choose what kind of paper to to make the flyers out of. Got so it. you're gonna get you're gonna get down here, and there are gonna be some options. That sun is the best option. Sandwich wrap. Well, maybe not the best. It's the best option you have available to you as a sandwich wrapper. Okay, that'd be a good way. But if you go all the way down, parchment. parchment. You could pick parchment, which maybe not the best idea. I don't know. Um, and Fixed there you go. Paper. Thick stock paper. That's what you want. So now found the best option in the star. So you'll definitely want to crack that. Uh, good options are in the suns, and kind of bad options are in the moons. Got there it. There you go. 
So I got parchment on this one when I when I played because I didn't know what I was doing. I just was like, oh, I'll crack one of these and that's fine. And then it was, yeah, there you go. You got parchment. And it's like, oh, it's kind of a weird, kind of huh. a weird uh, flyer because now I think he's gonna ask you what you should, yeah, what do you want to write on it? And <laughs> this this is where I think the game gets kind of silly and fun. So why don't you do this one and then we'll end. We want something else here. Mm hmm. So yeah, you're just navigating this area with with little jumps and and things like that. I just there's something about the feel that isn't isn't quite there for me. Well, I think that like the physics shit of this is just the crank. I can see what you're saying about the crank. Like that's mm -hmm. a little problematic for sure. Come on. Because you because you feel like you feel like you because it, it's asking you for some precision, yes. and you're just not quite getting it. Is this you? Yeah. Yeah, not, not quite what you're looking for, right? Um, and that's... I also got the moon on this one, which I, I think the moon on this is good. Help! Help! <laughs> help. And, you know, it's not wrong. You do you do want help. It's maybe not... I like, is this you? The, is this you? <laughs> yeah. It's probably best uh, if your dog is able Shit. to read. Shit! <laughs> Uh, but yeah, when when the the stuff is so precise, you'd you'd want it to be precise yeah. all the time, and for it yeah, to just you lose want to get a little bit more of that for sure. Yeah, for it to just lose responsiveness once it gets past its threshold doesn't feel very good. Is this there you? you go. Is this you? That's what we're going with. Let's hope your dog can read. Is this you? Uh, this is cool. I it's, it's got. I like the style for sure, for sure. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah, there you go. See, it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, it's a it's a fun little time. It's a it's a neat little choose your own adventure. And I I don't think the game cares if you get things wrong. It's it's kind of a almost a Mad Lib. Where yeah. You're just tossing things in, and it's just fun to fun to do. Uh, well, Chase, what do you, do you think we should call it there, wrap it up there? We've been showing stuff off for about an hour now. I would like to, I would like to probably end on Kranken. Okay. Kranken's time, time travel adventure. I think that's the, the quote unquote killer app for this one. This is the one done by the, uh, by the, um, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. It's by the, uh, uh Katamari Damashi guy. I'm sure I'm sure Jiggy can help us out in the chat there because I'm still I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. Um, but yeah, so so this one the, the crank is moving time forwards or backwards, and there's certain there's certain actions that you do as you go. Thank you, Kate. Um, certain actions that you do while time is moving there. So when you loser! when you are you're a loser. Are you around that flower? For Thank you. Thank well, you, Jiggy. You you I don't know dirty. if that was for you Bobby getting sick, hit or for me babies. not knowing or not remembering Kata Takahashi, but a little bit both, of both. We both deserve it. Honestly. Uh, so Kraken's trying to get to his date, and uh, to do that, he needs to avoid these obstacles. There you go. Got it. Yeah. Oh, oh but, you're, but you're late, so you get suplexed. Damn it. Yeah. And I think you All also right. get slapped and kicked in the balls. But basically, you're just trying to avoid oh. these obstacles. Oh, shit. Okay. The, it's a neat little thing. Ooh, okay. You, know, yeah, you want to be up on that hurdle. Oh, I, I'm aware. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm aware. I don't want to get that butterfly. God knows that'll fucking get me. There we go. <laughs> No. Oh. If this game probably requires more precision than any other game, I. It's pretty and remarkable I... how they they do Ooh, it. Nice. Yeah. No. I, I think for better or worse, it, it requires a lot of precision. That fucking hitbox, man. Yeah, there are some things that are a little too pixel perfect for me to to really love this thing, but I think it's got. I think it's got some very cool ideas. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, Get out of here. You 
Uh oh. Stay away <laughs> from me. Now when I mean, you get far far enough in the game, because you keep getting second and third, and right now fifth fifth chances are on your fifth date. Um, you uh, it starts to give you like a, a <laughs> shit. Okay, yeah, you just got murdered by a pig there. Um, but they'll have stampedes of pigs coming from behind you to force you to uh, force you to uh, to move at a relatively brisk pace. The... Is that Johnny showing up on our stream tonight? There you go, here you go. Bobby, do you need a hint on this one? Yeah. Go back home. Okay. I mean, go back home when, when the pig's there. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Couldn't go back in time. Yeah. The pig can't hurt you when you're at home. That's why I never hang out with Johnny. That's fair. At least not in person. There you go. Go, go, go. Oh, wait, no. Oh, sorry. So I, I forgot there pigs. were multiple pigs. I forgot there were multiple pigs. So many pigs. Hey, it doesn't get wild, Jiggy. It gets hog wild. Yeah, nice. Well Shit. done. <laughs> uh, I also think it's a little slow to reset. Because I, yeah. I want I want this game to be super meat boy. I want this thing to be snap, snap, snap. Let me get right back in there. It's it's probably good. Oh, whoa. Shit. Why are there so many pigs? Why are there so many pigs? They have to end at some point. Do they? Now they go. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, go! Oh! oh! <laughs> right in the crank. All right. Seventh date. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I believe canonically her... Uh... Nice. There you go. Now you gained it. Now you gained it. Cranking it, baby. Ah, uh, suplex again. I believe her name is Crankette. Okay. Canonically, in the game. Pigs are coming. Uh, yeah, I don't know if those are pigs or if those are... I think they're pigs. It might be another butterfly coming in. Oh, yeah, it is. Ooh. God, it gets real finicky, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it really does. And it gets to the point where you are having to go forward and backward and it's and so... really thread needles. It it gets extremely tough. Let me see let me see if I can figure out what level I'm on. What date I'm on. Shit. Just to give you an idea. I'm not I wouldn't say I'm super far. I mean I'm further than you, but uh... all that just to get kicked. Dang. I'm on the 15th date. So I'm not too much further than you, but... Come on, pigs. Come on, pigs. Shit. I have to sprint. Oh, am I faster than a pig is my question. Depends how, how hard can you crank it. There you go. Cranked. Oh! Still not fast enough to crank up, though. Uh-oh. Don't step on that poop. Nice. Oh, oh. Oh! oh. Wow, that hurt. You just, you just jumped right into that bird. Rather jump in the bird than step in the shit, you know? That's how I live my life. Yeah, tilt, tilt that. Yep, just a little bit. There you go. There you go. You got it. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, oh, she just hadokened your ass. Hadoken. Nice. Now probably just a little cup of tea. Uh oh. Goddamn Big damn kneecaps. Those. Uh, that's a silly game. <laughs> that is a silly, silly game. It's it's a silly game, but it's a it's a fun game. It's got an interesting idea to it. Um, there, there's plenty of other stuff on here. We'll Bobby mentioned it before. Uh, we did do a podcast on this with our good friend Jiggy, who is in the chat right now. Um, on my podcast called Gamers on the Go, you can find that at gamersonthego.com. 
we talked about the first two weeks of content. So uh, that was that's Whitewater Wipeout, um, the Casual Birder, this Crank and Time Travel Adventure, and uh, and Boogie Loops, which we didn't show here, but it's it's a thing that makes loops, and we're not musical Boogie people. Boogie on exactly. down to the loops. Uh, I'm going to so, fix, fix your window. Yeah, here. yeah, having a good time over there. Uh, um, also, our schedule's wrong on here because I forgot to update it there. So, eh, the no worries. Not that it matters. Yeah, he did say he'd never make another game after Katamari, and then he made lots of games after Katamari. Nobi Nobi Boy, Wadam, this, he's, uh, and plus all the other Katamari games. I don't hey, know how much he did. Can't beat him, Wadam, you know? Uh, that's what they say. You're, you're right about that. Um, but yeah, you can you can hear us talk about the the system itself, the device itself, and uh, and those first two weeks of content, and a couple side loaded games on that episode of Gamers on the Go, which Bobby has just put in the chat there. Um, we're planning on doing more episodes of that as well, checking in maybe in another couple weeks uh, when we've when we've got even more games to play and more games to uh, to check out and talk about there, and maybe some more side loaded projects as well that we're excited about. Um, so keep looking for those things, but for now, uh, you know, that's, uh, that was a look at the Playdate. I'm glad we got to show this thing off, because, oh, you know, it was a portable device, so you'd think this isn't something that you'd really stream out, but, uh, but this thing does, with that mirror app, it, it makes it really easy to, uh, to stream and to show off for people. I think that's great. Yeah, and apologies that, uh, our schedule... It's not updated beneath us here, but if you follow our link that I just put in chat, we've got that updated on like Instagram and Twitter, but I can run you through the actual schedule. Please not, do. Yeah. Not last we week's. Uh, so tonight we did our casual Monday play date showcase. We've talked about this off and on a little bit for a while. We'll probably do some quick looks for other games that come out on itch or there, or as Chase mentioned, uh, Jiggy, who's been hanging out in chat with us tonight. I think we're going to be coming back every few weeks to talk about the seasons that's there so lots of good reasons to hang out with us and gamers on the go please follow along where you can there uh tomorrow we've got a quick look going up for a uh, game in early access called the iron oath which is a really neat management like team management resource management a lot of really cool shit uh i like turn -based that game. strategy yeah turn-based hex base um, hexagons yeah it's really, really well done for its first early access. There's some big shit coming. So keep an eye on that. That will go live tomorrow, um, 10 a.m. Central. Wednesday night, we've got a deep dive for our, so our podcast, Casual Hour. We record that live every Wednesday at 10.30. Johnny's going to take us through on the back half of that episode to just kind of go down memory lane of some of our fondest memories of DLC, ones that really stuck out to us. Um, that was that was supposed to happen last week, but Johnny was Johnny sick. Was it, was a, he was sick. it was not a whole like thing, sick, so we, but sick. Hey, gross. He's a gross man. He's a but, gross uh, man. He's he's better now, and we'll uh, we'll get to that deep dive episode and look forward to uh, talking about. Yeah, uh, and again, that will be next or this Wednesday. Uh, let me turn off this schedule just so we don't have that to confuse folks. Sure. Um, yeah. And then Thursday morning. We've got a Bobby's very, of the year. we've got a very different type of a quick look. Uh, we're going to be talking about Trek to Yomi. If you've followed along with our podcast at all since that game came out on May fifth, highly, highly anticipated game by me. Mm -hmm. I think Chase as well. But uh, the final product has left me feeling very disappointed. And yeah, we'll if, if you if you are also highly anticipating that game like we were, I'd say, uh, and you haven't already bought it, so maybe check out a quick look yeah. before buy, you uh, buy or beware. before you toss some money. Um, yeah, so we got a quick look that'll be going up on Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, over on YouTube, and then right here on Twitch Friday night. Uh, tune back in because. Uh, co-host Johnny and then my cousin Jason are going to be joining us and we're going to be playing this game called V Rising which uh, I think is a really fucking cool game it's definitely my shit it is a, a survival-esque RPG base building craft building where you're a vampire um, we've got a server set up so the three of us are going to be hanging out as vampire lords and doing our best to upgrade there it's Chase made fun of it 
lo lovingly and called it isometric Valheim. He's not too far off. It's got a lot of Valheim, Valheim Rising. Valheim Rising. That's what the V stands for. <laughs> um, yep. uh, but it's a really cool game. It's got a great look to it. We're going to be streaming that 10.30 p.m. Uh, Central right here on Twitch. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with the show. There's a few games coming out this week that we're excited about. I know next week we got some stuff lined up for it. Um, we did wrap up, for the time being, our Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time stream. I can tease out that uh, here in just a little bit, the 1.0 release of one of my favorite early access games, Hard Space Shipbreaker, is going to be coming out. And I just want to say how pumped I am for that team to finally be getting that off the ground in a 1.0 fashion. We're gonna do a new quick look for that. That'll be going out next week, but we're also probably going to stream me playing that with Chase's commentary yeah, uh, so for, love that. for the next few Mondays. Uh, it's a really, really cool thing. Uh, while we're talking about really cool things that we might be doing some more stuff with on stream, I had a pretty good mail day as we're talking about stuff that we can do on the go. Um, I... You son of a bitch. Got my Steam Deck um, and so have jealous. been playing around with this thing, and it is fucking cool. So we might do some stuff with this bad boy uh, here on stream as well. Maybe some AMA type stuff uh, showing off the potential of it. So if you got any questions, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know if that's something you'd be interested in, and maybe we'll, we'll do a little sidebar. I'm... I, I'm not satisfied anymore with my analog pocket and my play date i need i need my Steam deck too do you need I the fam the family deserves to be together and i need all these fucking devices i think you know if i can volunteer myself to chase here i think that when he gets his um it's a really interesting crossroads for gamers on the go from what i understood gamers on the go to be when i first met chase to where we're at today, which is like, what the fuck is a mobile game or a game you take on the go anymore? Yeah, I think it. I think it really is. It's that. It's that art, right? It's the. I, I don't know it, but I know when I see it. Yep. And and I think we we have blurred those lines with things like the Switch and now things like the Steam Deck, which are just it, all all games are portable games, and yet no games are portable games. Anymore. So it's a. Uh, yeah. It's interesting to see what we can do with that. At the same time, uh, that that Steam Deck can emulate a lot of shit that is is definitely uh, absolutely Dude, portable. I, games. I'm not going to tell you anybody how to do it, mm -hmm. but you can play Switch games on that, which is wild. Without, yeah, without putting Windows on that, you can get that thing to play um, Switch games, which in in probably in better frame rates than the switch can do maybe so uh it's maybe. cool like uh I'd, I'd like to unpack what this thing is on a more like journalistic approach with you maybe on the gamers and they go and kind of talk about what this is and i yeah i, I would like to do that we're gonna get together um, this weekend irl with johnny we're gonna eat, we're gonna play around with that i don't think johnny's seen a play date in person yet either so we're gonna have a good time doing a little show and tell this weekend hanging out having a few beers and doing all those things but um this was fun. I think that we'll probably do more stuff like this down the road. Like as new games start to accumulate on here, we might do more of a podcast with gamers on the go, maybe a show and tell here on our stream, uh, just because we've got the resources to do that on casual hour versus gamers on the go. So it's a nice little handshake between all that. But Jiggy, yeah, uh, if you're still hanging out, maybe we can have you hang out with us one night on Discord while we do this and get your, your two cents while we play through some of this stuff. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, Chase, anything else we need to go over before we wrap up here? I think we covered it all. It sounds like we got a good week of content coming to uh, coming to the casual hour. Yeah, excited buddy. for. I'm really excited for Wednesday. I've got a couple games to talk about, and then uh, we've got that DLC discussion that I think will be quite fun. Absolutely. Well, uh, this has been a fun night. Tune in again on Wednesday right here on Twitch, but tune in to YouTube tomorrow and Thursday at 10 a.m. for our latest releases there. Thanks, everybody. Be safe. Take care.